Hello everyone, this is a video I've been waiting to do for a while. This time we're ranking Iron Maiden's studio albums. Now I'm going to be showing all the CDs. I have all the remasters, uh, the, the Digipack remasters, which came out between 2015 and 2019. Also included with all the studio albums that remastered were Rock and Rio and Live After Death, the two live albums. But they won't be featured here because they are live albums. Now, it was a little harder for me to rank these because Iron Maiden is one of my favorite bands of all time. And also, this band never released a bad album at all. So just because something is at my least favorite, doesn't mean it sucks, doesn't mean I like it. It's just, I prefer the other albums over this one, just my opinion. So I'm gonna get right into it. Um, 16 studio albums total. Uh, coming to 16th for me, is the first album they did after the departure of Bruce Dickinson. Uh, Blaze Bally on vocals. This is the X Factor. Cool artwork. Um, for me, I feel like some of the songs are a little too long. And I, Blaze Bally is a great singer, but you can't replace Bruce Dickinson. Uh, kind of the same thing with Judas Priest. You know, when Ripper Owens came in, you can't really produce, uh, replace Rob Halford. But I just feel like some of these songs were a little uh, long. I feel they were just trying to do, uh, Blaze was trying to mimic Bruce a little too much when he could just, you know, did himself a little more. Uh, but Sign on the Cross is great, Lord of the Flies, Man on the Edge. The first couple songs of this are great, but after that it just feels like it gets a little longer for me. Uh, maybe if they, you know, 11 tracks total, maybe they cut it down to like maybe 8. Be a little better, but kind of hard to see what tracks you would cut on this. Okay, coming next for me. The latest release from Iron Maiden, uh, even though it's you know now almost six years ago that this was released. This is a Book of Souls uh, double album. Again, a little too long for me. Uh, if Eternity Should Fail, the opener, is probably my favorite song off of here. Uh, I just expect a little more. Uh, but when I heard it was a double album, I was like, eh, maybe they're going to put, you know, these songs are going to be a little too long. And yeah, epic songs, but um, I don't know, I feel like the artwork lacks a little bit but I do feel like it's a little better than the last two albums they put out before this. But I don't know, it's just, for me, it's just, it's tough to get all the way through. And like I said, not not a bad album, as are none of these, just it's a little too long for me. And I don't know, maybe if they released this, like a, kind of like how Guns N' Roses did with the Use Your Illusions part one or two, maybe it'd be a little better, but I don't know. All right, coming in next for me, Virtual 11 or Virtual X1, however you wanna say it. Um, this is the second album and final album with Blaze Valley and this I feel like there's only eight tracks on here again epic longer songs but not as long as the X Factor uh, not a lot of people probably think I'm crazy rating this over the X Factor because a lot of people love the X Factor and like I said it's a great album it's just for me it's a little too long uh, but but this this is great uh, The Angel and the Gambler is great uh, Lightning Strikes Twice The Klansman and finally, the end, Como Estas Amigos. Um, for me, I, I, I just prefer this Please Valley album over AX Factor. Uh, coming in next, The Final Frontier. Uh, not, the, not the greatest artwork, like I was saying with Book of Souls. I feel like it was better than this and the one that came before this. Um, it's okay album. Bruce Dickinson, you know, obviously is back in the band. It's the legendary lineup with all three guitarists. Uh, Satellite 15, The Final Frontier is a long epic uh, opener. El Dorado is decent. Uh, the Alchemist is cool. Uh, the Talisman is probably the best song I'd say on here. And when the wind, wild wind blows is uh, like 11 minute the closer on here, which is which is cool. But uh, I don't know. I mean, I mean, this is uh, like 2010 Iron Maiden, so you can't expect them to keep putting out the number of the beast and peace of mind or all that stuff. But I mean, it's still epic Iron Maiden. Alright, coming next for me. A Matter of Life or Death. Uh, again, I don't really like the cover artwork. With the, uh, you know, Eddie and the skeletons with the tank and all that. Uh, but what's cool songs in here, I did, I, it took me a couple listens when I first got this. Uh, but then again, this is like, I think 2006 it was released. But I do like it now. I like it a lot better than when it first came out. Uh, Different World, These Colors Don't Run. The Pilgrim, Out of the Shadows. The Reincarnation of Benjamin Bragg. I always like that song. For the greater good of God, Lord of Light, and then Legacies, another epic closer, a uh, little long, clocks in, uh, like I think over nine minutes, but a little too long for me on that closer. Next, 
Dance of Death. This is a 2003 uh, release. And as you can see, it's kind of the cover art where it kind of resembles the times, kind of like that, um, that c computer animated CGI in the early stages, kind of like how the Chili Peppers used in their Californication video. But some cool songs on there. So, uh, Wildest Dreams is great. Rainmaker, No More Lies is my favorite off the here. Uh, the title track, Dance, Dance of Death. Uh, New Frontier is cool. Face in the Sand, Age of Innocence, and Journey Man ends the album. It's a really, really good song. Yeah, this is a cool album. And then th this was released, you know, kind of in a time of, uh, mm, I feel like the, the metal core was kind of on the rise. New metal was still there, but ending. And then these guys just come out with a balls out new wave of British heavy metal album and just kick all their asses. All right, coming next for me, No Prayer for the Dying. Uh, first album to feature Janet Gers on guitar. Uh, really good album. Another album that took me a couple listens to really get into. I, I felt like it was kind of weak, but now I love it. It's great. Tail Gunner, Holy Smoke, the title track, Public Enemy Number One, Fate's Warning, The Assassin, uh, Bring Your Door to a Slaughter, and Mother Russia are definitely the two top tracks on here. This was a 1988 release. Um, I'm sorry, 1990 release. Um, we obviously know the great album that came out in 88 by Iron Maiden. Uh, different artwork, I feel like, for the time. I feel like they could have done a little better with this guy, but it's kind of cool how Eddie's coming up from the ground and grabbing him. Uh, it's kind of just showing, like, I don't know, I, I always thought it was maybe this is like a grave digger working a night shift and he's, you know, checking the graves or something. You see Eddie popping up out of the case, getting grabbing him. All right, coming in next, Fear of the Dark. Uh, again, I think odd artwork of Eddie as a tree. Uh, now I just feel like it's more iconic and kind of legendary, so. I just go with it but at the time it's probably like what the hell is this uh 1992 released last album they would do with bruce dickinson before he would return in you know 99 2000 um produced by the great martin birch i should say be quick or be dead from here to eternity afraid to shoot strangers fear is the key childhood's end wasting love great tracks uh judas be my god is great weekend warrior and then it ends with the epic epic fear of the dark uh, one of my all-time favorite Iron Maiden songs, and I, I just think it's one of Maiden's greatest songs. Obviously, the title track, and, and a good way for Bruce Dickinson to go out. He'd obviously jumpstart his solo career, which wasn't huge, but uh, yeah, un unfortunately, uh, Maiden kind of uh, suffered a little bit throughout the 90s, as did most metal, most metal bands. Uh, but like I said, Blaze Valley was a great singer, but he couldn't compete with Bruce Dickinson as really no one can. Coming to next for me, speaking to Bruce Dickinson, this was his return to Iron Maiden, on lead vocals obviously. Uh, also uh, Adrian Smith's return, he had left the band for a while. And it features the first album by Maiden to feature all three guitarists, Dave Murray, Janet Gers, and Adrian Smith. Uh, the Wicker Man, which was a radio hit back in 2000 when this was released. Uh, great, great song. Ghost of the Navigators, great. Brave New World, great. Blood Brothers. These are just all great songs. Uh, and, and the close is a thin line between love and hate. Maiden, I feel, uh, always had these great closing songs in all their albums. Like they, they made sure they had this epic song to close it. Now, this artwork I do like. Uh, it's a little different. It features Eddie. It's kind of like this, uh, you know, evil cloud. And uh, you would think it's England, but it's kind of a futuristic world down there kind of a cross between England and I don't know Australia but I, I think ma mainly England but it's yeah it's this futuristic world and you know being released in 2000 if you remember back then uh, we didn't know what was going to happen a lot of conspiracy theories uh, but yeah really cool album and this definitely brought Iron Maiden back back in the mainstream and um, yeah they were all over the place they were in Hit Parade Magazine they were in Circus they were touring um, arenas again and again, this came out at the height of new metal and just you know crushed everything out there. I think they actually did a Nasfest tour sometime around this. But yeah, this this is the jump start. I feel like the second part of Maiden's career after Blaze Valley. All right, coming up next, one of the greatest artworks of all time in my opinion, Seventh Son of a Seventh Son. Uh, this is the last album to feature Adrian Smith before he would return to uh, Brave New World. Kind of a proggy album. Uh, well, definitely a proggy album. Again, produced by Martin Birch. 
Moonchild, Infinite Dreams. Uh, I love that song. Such a cool vocal in the beginning when that starts off uh, with that guitar line. Can I Play With Madness, Evil That Men Do, the title track, Seventh Son of a Seventh Son. Such an epic song. The Prophecy, The Clairvoyant, and finally ends with Only The Good Die Young. Uh, not the best closer for me compared to the other Maiden albums. But the cool thing about this is, um, I don't know, I just love that artwork and just defines prog metal, this album. Um, but if you look at the back cover, there you can see Eddie from uh, Live After Death, Eddie from Peace of Mind, and Eddie, uh, Number of the Beast. And for some reason, this album gets a lot of hate. I don't know why, because I mean, just that blue color just really draws me to the album. So cool. All right, coming in next. I feel like this is the first album by Maiden to kind of fall victim to that 80s. Um, you know, it had keyboards, a little bit of synth on it, somewhere in time. Uh, but still epic songs on here and the guitar work is amazing as always but it's definitely very 80s sounding for maiden where yeah the 80s were their biggest decade is the decade they debuted but they always had this signature new wave of british heavy metal sound which i think they changed a little bit on this but i still think overall a decent album and um as you can see another like futuristic uh kind of like um i don't know like those 80s movies that something like uh I can't even think, like some Terminator Rise or something maybe. Uh, 1986 this was released. Kind of reminded me of uh, like a Power Rangers character or something on there. But yeah, Summer in Time. Caught Summer in Time is the, well it's not really a title track because it's called Caught Summer in Time. Wasted Years, Sea of Madness, Heaven Can Wait, The Loneliness of the Long Distance Runner, my favorite track off this album. Stranger in a Strange Land, Deja Vu, Alexander Great finally finishes off this album another one produced by martin birch the legendary martin birch who sadly passed away all right this next one may shock a lot of people because a lot of people put this album as their favorite album made an album one of the greatest metal albums of all time maybe number two if not number one by maiden but for me there's just other albums i like better than that. the other albums i would choose over it do i love this album i love it one of my greatest one of my favorite albums of all time but there are four Four maiden albums that I put over this. Coming to number five for me, Killers. Obviously, the artwork is iconic. Uh, it's amazing. First album to feature Adrian Smith on guitar. Last album to feature Paul Diano on vocals. Uh, just, just an amazing, amazing album. The Ides of March, uh, such a cool instrumental, leads into Rat Child, my favorite. Yeah, I'd say that's probably my favorite track off this album. Uh, Murders in the Rue Morgue, Another Life, Genghis Khan, Innocent Exile, Killers, uh, Prodigal Son, Purgatory, and Drifter. Just just cool, cool stuff. Um, yeah, Maiden was definitely, uh, you know, a big influence in all these uh, 80s metal bands, especially guys with thrash metal like Slayer, Metallica, Megadeth, and this was the album that really made them take notice. Uh, I, I, a lot of people took notice, but the following album really blow the band up. All right, coming in number four for me. In my opinion, another one of the greatest artworks of all time on an album, Power Slave. A uh, huge album. This basically is Maiden at the, the top of the world. They did the Live After Death tour after this. Um, just, just amazing stuff. Released in 1984. Ace is High, Two Minutes to Midnight. Lost for Words, Big Aura, which is the instrumental. Flash of the Blade, such a cool song. The Duelist, Back in the Village. The title track, Power Slave, which is amazing. Such an epic song. I feel like that that track could end the album, but they they they, they one up it with The Rhyme of the Ancient Mariner, which is like an over 12 minute song. So epic, so amazing. Uh, it's got that Egyptian look to the album and Man, I, I, I can't really say much more about this album. It's, it's just so good. If you're watching this video, I'm sure you agree how good it is. And you probably ranked this album up there as your favorite. Or one of the top favorites. All right. Uh, I'm quick here. I'm going to get to uh, number three. The debut album by Iron Maiden. Self-titled. I, I love this album. I like this more than Killers. I just think it's 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 from start to finish. It's just amazing. Um. The original band that started, Paul Diano on vocals, Dave Murray on guitar, along with Dennis Stratton. The only album he would do with Iron Maiden on guitars. Uh, obviously, Steve Harris on bass, Clyde Barrow on drums. 
Prowler, Remember Tomorrow, Running Free, Phantom of the Opera, Transylvania, Strange World, Charlotte the Harlot, and the title track, Iron Maiden, which names, which ends it. It's, it's more of a punky song, as Paul Diano had more of a punk look, more of a punk vibe, which is, uh, which is more the reason that um, he was replaced. He wanted to go a certain direction, and Steve Harris, Dave Murray, wanted to take the band different, heavier, more metal direction. Whereas Paul Diano kind of like doing stuff like this, but this is an amazing album. I mean, one of the greatest debuts of all time, along with being one of the greatest metal albums of all time. Uh, the one track that is not on here was not originally released on here, but was included in the later remasters was Sanctuary, which I love, and um, it was included in the '98 remasters, but it's not included on this because this is the original album's re-remastered. So Sanctuary is not on here, but I do own. Um, the cassette of this with that which includes Sanctuary so that's the way I get it yeah Iron Maiden the debut album amazing all right number two for me peace of mind uh, the artwork is so cool features Eddie <sighs> kind of like a, I guess in a padded room in a Saint asylum being chained up and he just looks crazy and just just you know evil and almost satanic and it's just great just definitely reckon you know resembles the music on here and uh like <laughs> most of you know which album is followed up and to uh, follow up that album which i didn't mention yet is mostly impossible but this album managed to do it and then they followed this up with power slave so uh, like i was saying at this time made them just on top of the world um and this is all without really any radio play mtv play or anything and it's all word of mouth and i mean obviously the artwork sold it the artwork is amazing on every album the production by martin birch is amazing on every album all the albums he's done made uh, and just the logo itself iron maiden the way it's written just makes you want to buy it uh where he goes there revelations flight of icarus die with your boots on the trooper i can go without hearing again i i it's I, for me it's just the one iron maiden song that i've heard so much and it's one of the most famous songs great song I just, I, I heard it so many times. Still Life, uh, Quest for Fire, Sun and Steel, and the Tame Land to end it, another epic track. Uh, for me, I would have to probably pick Flight of Icarus or Sun and Steel as my favorite song off of here. It's just so hard to do. And I just like uh, the bands like looking for a feast there, getting ready to eat the brain, the peace of mind. And it's the first album to feature the great Nico Brain on drums. And coming in at number one for me, you probably already guessed it. The most famous, well known album by Iron Maiden, Number of the Beast, their biggest selling album. Their biggest album, obviously. First album to feature Bruce Dickinson on vocals, last album to feature Clive Brown on drums. Amazing album. From start to finish, uh, not only is it one of the greatest albums of all time, one of the greatest metal albums of all time. Invaders, Children of the Damned, which is uh, one of my favorite tracks ever. The Prisoner, 22 Acacia Avenue, The Number of the Beast, the title track. I know it's played a lot, but I still love it. Run to the Hills is the one track off of here that guitar work is amazing. I love that riff, but I've heard it so many times on The Trooper that I can go without listening to it, but it's still an amazing song. One of the greatest songs of all time. One of the greatest metal songs of all time also. Gangland and my all-time favorite Iron Maiden song finish this and one of my favorite songs of all time hallowed be thy name oh uh, that artwork is great it just goes with the album it goes with the theme you have the devil there the number of the beast you have eddie looking his most iconic there i mean from between killers and this eddie has the best look i just think it's amazing see that's my ranking of iron maiden albums i'll go over over time number one the number of the beast number two Peace of Mind. Number three, the self-titled debut from 1980. Number four from 1984, Power Slave. Number five, Killers from 1981. Number six, Somewhere in Time from 1986. Number seven, Seventh Son of a Seventh Son from 1988. Not a, uh, no further dying. This is the one from 88. Messed up earlier. What am I on now? Say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven. You know, I think I'd, I think I want to flip flop these two. I think I'd put Seven Son of a Seven Son over uh, 
peace of mind actually. So number six for me would definitely be Seven Son of Seven Son. Number seven, peace of mind. See, that's the thing with these albums. They're so great, it's hard to keep them at the ranking. Number eight, The Great Brave New World from 2000. Bruce Dickinson's Return along with Adrian Smith. Number nine, Fear the Dark, Amazing Young from 92. 1990, <laughs> No Prayer for Dying. 2003, Dance of Death. 2006, uh, Matter of Life and Death. Final Frontier from 2010. Virtual uh, 11 from 1998. The Book of Souls from 2015. And finally, last but not least, um, The X Factor from 1995, first album, Please Valley. Again, thanks for watching the video. Uh, please drop your ranking in the comments. Again, this is just my opinion. I'm not saying I'm right or wrong. So I'd like to see your ranking. And um, if you like what you see, please subscribe. I'm trying to do more videos more frank frequently. Uh, I did drop three this week. I've got a couple more planned. Uh, hopefully I'm gonna do three more within a week. And you can always follow my Instagram, at Gary Elysiums. I post a lot of my collection on there. And uh, what else do I got coming up? I think I want to do a big music room, uh, which you can't, you can only see what's behind me, but basically my whole basement here is um, all new collectibles, albums, CDs, cassettes, and it's a finished basement, so it's not, you know, shitty looking. <laughs> but yeah, I'm going to show up my music collection in one of these videos, and um, everyone, thanks for watching, have a safe week, stay metal.